Hello everyone, I'm Meng Yuchu. I'm glad to introduce our work on physics-informed neural fields for smoke reconstruction with sparse data. This work is done by me, Ling Jie Liu, Chen Zheng, Eric Franz, Hans Peter Seider, Christian Tilbert, and Halep Zia. To start, I would like to introduce the background of our work. Fluid is everywhere in our daily life. They are playing important roles in many activities. These activities include complex business, such as the design of a vehicle. We see a wind tunnel test in the picture. We are also dealing with fluid in very common daily activities, such as the communication between people. As shown in the Schlieren image, we talk, exhale air flows, and get our voice delivered. In a wide range of fluid activities, it will be very helpful if we can analyze and understand their complex fluid behavior with some tools. So do we have such tools to measure fluid motion? Yes, but not as convenient as we want. The PIV, Particle Image Velocimetry Method, is one of the most established methods in industry. In this method, we inject special particles into the target flow. We light them up using some laser and check them with special cameras. Due to these special setups, we cannot easily apply them to measure an arbitrary fluid motion in our daily life. Now we see the challenge for fluid reconstruction. We want to capture fluid motion, which are complex physical phenomena, but we want to use simple setups, which may not provide sufficient constraints. This demand makes it a promising direction to reconstruct fluid from RGB videos. Let's take a look at recent progress in video-based scene reconstruction. Fluid reconstruction methods are most relevant to our work. They provide physically plausible results by considering the underlying physical equations. However, this work are usually limited to simple scenes with fluids as the main target and cannot support arbitrary lighting conditions. For scene reconstruction, NERF provides a continuous neural representation that only support static things. Neural volumes encodes dynamic things on the other hand with inverse mapping, but does not provide velocity or consider any physical constraints. In our work, we aim to provide physically plausible reconstruction of hybrid things, including not only fluid, but also obstacles in arbitrary shapes. We want to relax the constraints and support things with unknown lighting conditions or obstacles to achieve this goal, we propose a continuous, implicit neural fluid representation. In the first place, let's take a look at the input and output of our method. The only input of our method is a sparse site of synchronized RGB videos with known camera poses, like this example video provided by Scalar Flow dataset. Based on the input, we use a fully connected neural network to learn the radiance distribution in space and time. More specifically, the radiance network maps a 4D coordinate XYZT to its corresponding radiance, which is consisted by density and color. The relationship between input image sequences and this neural radiance representation is constrained via the differentiable rematching. If the input multiple videos have a good coverage of views, the network would be able to automatically disentangle the density and color information without relying on lighting conditions as input. This part can be seen as a dynamic nerve model. In other words, we extend the static nerve model along the time dimension to encode the time-varying neural regions field for dynamic things. While differentiable rendering helps the static nerve model to unify readings information spatially using images at different camera poses, it is important for dynamic nerve model to unify information temporally according to images at different time steps. This is need to be done with differentiable physics. Here, we propose to use another fully connected network to learn the velocity field in space and in time as our differentiable physical model.
Combining the neural readings and neural velocity fields, we get our neural fluid representation. It is an implicit continuous representation, which is different to previous work. Fully connected neural networks not only provide readings and velocity as outputs, but also provide their spatial temporal derivatives with auto differentiation. With these derivatives, we can apply physical equations as soft constraints to supervise the relationship between fluid density and fluid velocity. In this way, we get a physically plausible neural fluid representation, which is obtained from image sequences in an end-to-end -end optimization process. The idea of our work to represent continuous spatial temporal functions of fluids with neural networks is inspired by the universal approximation theory. According to the theory, there exists a fully connected network that can approximate continuous high-dimensional functions accurately. Unfortunately, the theory doesn't provide an exact way to produce such an accurate network. But it is interesting and meaningful to explore the differentiable rendering and physics and to see what they can bring us. In addition to the differentiable system, we propose to use a hybrid architecture and a comprehensive supervision. Together, our method achieves better accuracy than previous work. Here are more details about our hybrid architecture and comprehensive supervision. On the architecture side, we want to support hybrid scenes with moving fluid and static obstacles. Thus, we propose to use two fully connected networks to represent the radiance fields. One network represents the static components without time as input, and the other one has time t as input and learns the time-varying radiance for dynamic components. The advantage of such hybrid architecture is that the model can separate static and dynamic components automatically without additional human labeling or obstacle geometry as input. For the velocity model, we only sample and supervise at positions that are not occupied by any static density. On such an architecture, we propose a comprehensive supervision from images, physical priors, and data priors. Regarding images, we applied an L2 loss, a VGG loss, and a ghost density regularization. Regarding physics, transport equation and novice jokes equations are used as soft constraints. As mentioned previously, we get the derivatives using the auto differentiation, and the network models are trained to minimize these equations with an L2 error. In addition, we use a pre-trained fluid model to, pre to prevent suboptimal solutions. In the following, I will show the effect of the supervision terms. On the image supervision, we found that VGG loss helps to keep better high-frequency details. We propose ghost density regularization to avoid empty regions being painted in the color of the background, which is black in the figure. We name this artifact as ghost density. It is likely to appear due to the density color ambiguity when using a sparse sight of cameras. In such case, the network generate ghost density to trivially fulfill image supervision in given views, but it is not physically plausible. As shown in the figure, we successfully remove this artifact using a regularization term to minimize the density when the color is close to the background. While physical equations help us to keep the result physically plausible, the results are not necessarily constrained to the ground truth. Especially when optimizing density and velocity fields simultaneously, we sometimes arrive at suboptimal local minimal with blurry velocity and underestimated vorticity. By supervising with the vorticity obtained from a pre-trained density to velocity fluid model, we can avoid avoid this suboptimal solution and get velocity results with enhanced vorticity. Here, we compare our result with related work on the synthetic scalar flow dataset.
As shown in the video, the reference on the left has a black background. Using RGB video as input without an alpha channel, our method is able to automatically disentangle the density and color information. We provide a plausible color channel in the rendering results. To visualize the alpha information, we show our results with a different background color in blue. Here, we show results in novel and rotating views. In the result of neural volumes, we see the ghost density artifact. Overfitting to sparse given views, neural volumes generates black smoke around, which should be empty and transparent regions. The last column shows the result of the global transport method. It contains a lot of high-frequency noise. The noise is more visible in the velocity and vorticity, which are visualized on the top and bottom, respectively. On the second row and last row, we show our result with and without the supervision of a pre-trained fluid model. With the help of the data prior, our final model provides an accurate velocity reconstruction which is close to the synthetic reference. We also have a more detailed quantitative comparison in our paper. In the following, we show more results on hybrid scenes with fluid and obstacles. The first scene is a regular one with a severe obstacle. In the first row, we compare our results with the reference in a novel view. A rotating view is given in the second row. We can see that our model with a hybrid structure can separate the obstacle and the smoke successfully. In the velocity visualization from the front, side, and top views, we can see that the velocity is reconstructed accurately. Here we show more results on a gate scene. In the given view, we can see that the smoke is coming from a tube and hitting three monsters on stairs. This is a complex scene with difficult geometry and strong motion when smoke hits the monsters. Our results in the novel view match the target scene well. We also render our results in a rotating view. Likewise, the hybrid structure can properly separate static obstacles and dynamic smoke. The reconstructed velocity field is visualized at the bottom. Regions with positive density are highlighted, and in these regions, our velocity matches the ground truth very well. Here we show another hybrid scene with a static car. There is a strong free stream velocity in the scene, and some smoke is passing through from the front. In the rendered novel view, we present the nice reconstruction of the static scene and the dynamic smoke. In the rotating view, we can see the spatial distribution of the dynamic radiance field more clearly. Here we show visualizations of the reconstructed density and velocity views. The side, front, and top views are given, and the velocity is shown on the bottom. While the reconstructed velocity is not as turbulent as the reference, it manages to match the ground truth velocity roughly. After seeing many results, I would like to conclude the project with discussions on contributions, limitations, and future directions. We propose the first method to reconstruct fluid in hybrid scenes with static obstacles. Being able to reconstruct hybrid fluid scenes from images with unknown lighting conditions and arbitrary obstacles, we see our method as an important step towards capturing and analyzing real-world fluid phenomena with relaxed constraints. Regarding limitations, our algorithm needs a long optimization time. Running our unoptimized code on single GPU, the simple plume thing takes 30 hours, while the hybrid game thing with complex physics and geometry takes around 60 hours. The time performance can be largely improved with more GPUs. It is also promising to try recent approaches on fast neural representations. As the first continuous neural fluid representation, our method presents high-quality results and there is a large room for improvement. Among others, high-frequency details are crucial to many fluid applications. It will be interesting to apply cross-to-fine optimization strategy and focus training technology. 
They are also helpful in improving optimization efficiency and reducing the optimization time. With rapid development and neural representations, we are confident that these limitations can be easily solved and better results can be achieved in the short future. In addition to enhance efficiency and accuracy with some engineering efforts, we are highly interested in continuing the research direction and developing methods for things with more complex physics, such as the intervalled things, things with moving obstacles, and things with multi-physics, such as fire, smoke, liquid, and so on. This is the end of our talk. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be happy to discuss with you in our Q&A sections. You can also check out our web page for more details of our project.